the qualities that a lower level teacher should possess. Even a lower level teacher should possess the necessary qualities. Question. In the age of Dharma decline, it is not easy to find a teacher who possesses all these qualities. Without enough merits, what should we do? Answer. The sutra requested by Sabahu states, A chariot with only one wheel, despite having a horse, cannot travel on the road. Similarly, without the support of fellow practitioners, sentient beings cannot attain enlightenment. Fellow practitioners are what we call Dharma friends, who are also considered good spiritual friends. A top-level spiritual friend, the best spiritual friend, should have 16 qualities. Intelligent, have good appearance, physically clean, be of reputable lineage, dedicate themselves wholeheartedly to the Dharma, eloquent, persevering, have disciplined their six senses, speak pleasantly, generous, compassionate, can endure hunger, thirst, and physical and mental suffering. Do not worship deities from other religions such as Brahmins, diligent, grateful, have faith in the three jewels. Those who possess all these 16 qualities are good spiritual friends. In the age of Dharma decline, those who possess all these 16 qualities are very rare. Therefore, those who have half, eight qualities, a quarter, four qualities, or one-eighth, two qualities, of these qualities can be followed. We can approach, follow, and practice with such spiritual friends. Even if they possess only one-eighth of these qualities, which is two, it is acceptable. It is not easy either. The minimum requirement is to possess one-eighth of the sixteen qualities mentioned above. To follow a teacher, one should first observe whether they possess the ten qualities mentioned above. If they don't possess the top level or middle level qualities, they should at least have the lower level qualities. If one mistakenly follows a false teacher without observing, one's countless lifetimes will be ruined. The Guru is our refuge throughout countless lifetimes and the guide who teaches us what to adopt and what to abandon. If we encounter a false teacher without careful observation, our merits and precious human life will be wasted. For example, if a viper coils under a tree and someone mistakenly thinks it's just a shadow and rests there, they will be bitten by the viper. As the treasury of precious qualities states, If one follows a teacher without careful observation, one's merits and precious human life will be ruined, just like mistaking a viper for a shadow will end up being bitten. Padmasambhava taught, Following a teacher without observing is like drinking poison. Accepting disciples without observing is like jumping off a cliff. Such actions can lead to trouble. Therefore, we should not casually accept disciples. It's essential to observe what kind of disciple one is. There are outer disciples, inner disciples, and secret disciples. Ordinary disciples are just outer disciples who only build a karmic connection with the teacher. They are not genuine disciples. Genuine disciples should regard the teacher as their spiritual guide. Those who follow a teacher and then casually abandon them are pitiful. 
Therefore, don't casually follow someone or claim someone to be your teacher. If you claim to follow someone but leave them after a few days without notification, you are pitiful, terrible and unreliable. Following a teacher means obeying their instructions from now on. Otherwise, you shouldn't follow them. You can consider them friends and attend a few Dharma lectures, but you don't need to follow them. If your foundation is weak, at the very least, you should ensure that your teacher is a genuine disciple of the Three Jewels and doesn't impart false teachings. This is the minimum requirement. If your foundation is too weak, you may not be able to observe whether they possess discipline, concentration, wisdom and other qualities. With a poor foundation, how can you observe it? At least, you should confirm that the teacher is a disciple of the three jewels, not a false teacher. As you progress in your practice, you can follow more advanced teachers. In the beginning, you can follow an ordinary teacher as long as they possess the two basic qualities. By following them, you will gradually elevate, just like how you progress from first grade to second grade in elementary school. Each grade has its own teacher. After graduating from elementary school, you need to follow a new teacher. You cannot stay in elementary school forever. You need to go to middle school and learn from middle school teachers. The principle is the same. As you progress in your study and practice, you can continuously follow better teachers who have higher spiritual attainments and can guide you more effectively. If a teacher spends a long time with you but doesn't teach you anything, what is the point of following them? They may bless you, but can that be called a blessing? Study and practice don't rely solely on blessings. Therefore, if a spiritual teacher doesn't teach you the Dharma, it is ineffective to follow them, and they are not a qualified spiritual teacher. In this case, it is not a teacher-student relationship, but a business relationship. For example, you may enshrine a deity statue at home, worshipping and offering incense to him. He may bless you to obtain wealth and business success, but won't teach you the Dharma. It is a business relationship. You hire someone to help with your business though in a more advanced sense. Therefore, you should observe based on your capability. Don't observe casually. Observe the teacher that aligns with your level. You may have just graduated from elementary school or just started attending elementary school. Yet, you may consider yourself a great practitioner and want to observe whether someone is a university professor. However, at that time, you don't have the ability to do so. Hence, observation depends on both parties. Sometimes, it relies on luck. It is a difficult job. Beginners lack wisdom and may not know much. They rely on their merits. We cannot say they rely on luck because luck is also a result of merits. We can only say that if you have the merit, you will have the luck to encounter good spiritual teachers. At the very least, you won't encounter false teachers. Even if you meet a false teacher, which is a result of your karma, you can immediately recognize them. You can discern, this is a false teacher, so I cannot follow them. If you can't even distinguish between right and wrong at the beginning, you will be in trouble. As far as I know, many Buddhists follow false teachers, not to mention whether these teachers possess any qualities. 
These Buddhists don't even know how to observe the most basic standards. They can't even distinguish between right and wrong. So what can they do? There are too many such Buddhists. So we should not only criticize false teachers, as wrong teachers often attract wrong disciples. Many times it is a result of their shared karma. Don't feel strange. Due to their karmic connections, once they hear teachings from false teachers, they feel excited because they resonate with the teachings. They might think, this teaching that promises quick enlightenment is great. As a result, they immediately resonate with the false teacher. These teachers may claim that their teachings can lead disciples to enlightenment in seven days. They use the name of Buddhism and they are false teachers within the Buddhist community. It is hard to discern. How can you discern them? They may talk about the Flower Ornament Sutra or even the Shurangama Sutra, but what they say are wrong views and distorted versions of the Buddha's teachings. However, many people follow them because such teachings meet their desires. What these teachers teach precisely aligns with these students' greed and impatience for quick results. Such teachers know that you seek quick results, so they give such teachings. They understand you well. They make you feel elated and believe that you have attained enlightenment, thereby making offerings to them. What they seek is your worship and offerings. They don't know how to guide you to liberation because they haven't attained liberation either. They are also confused. What they seek is your worship and offerings. Hence, they talk about advanced teachings. The more advanced, the better, as it seems more attractive. If you were to impart basic teachings, they would find it boring and say, I already know this, so what use is your teaching? In fact, they don't know, but they mistakenly believe that they know. So, false Buddhist teachers are the most difficult to discern, and we should be cautious. In the age of Dharma decline, many disciples lack merits and cannot discern. They are pitiable. If you were to teach them the authentic Dharma, they wouldn't understand, and they cannot distinguish right from wrong. False teachers may also talk about the Dharma, but they haven't practiced and realized it. They merely interpret the texts literally. So what is the use of that? They only present to you a hodgepodge of distorted teachings. If one has followed such a false teacher in the past, it will be hard for them to learn the authentic Dharma. They have deeply ingrained karmic habits from the past, making it hard to guide them. Since they have been influenced by false teachers, they feel uncomfortable when guided in the right direction. If you teach them the authentic Dharma, they might feel uncomfortable and upset. They will feel upset because they have been led astray by wrong teachings previously. Hence, if you impart the authentic Dharma to them, they will feel uncomfortable and unfamiliar. 